Okay, uh, welcome to uh, the questions at the end of chapter four of Fundamentals of Particle Technology, um, which is all about filtration. And um, we have here the uh, question two, which um, is all about constant pressure filtration. Uh, as per before, the question basically builds and although it starts with some information, with quite a lot of information and uh, what looks like a straightforward calculation but it isn't, um, it builds up to basically asking the time taken to filter the suspension um, which is really part 8 just down, down here. Uh, the necessary equations to bring into bear for the liquid filtration are over in this box out here, the idea clearly being made to avoid the necessity for scooting backwards and forwards inside the, the chapter to find the right equations. Most of what's needed uh, is in this box with the exception of part one, which is what I really want to talk about. So let's unclutter the screen a little bit and move over to the actual question in hand. And I mentioned there's a, there's a lot of extra information here which isn't necessary for answering the first part but is necessary for the, for the later parts. The question that we have in the first part is this, this question here. Calculate the volume of solids. Okay, so relevant to that we have 5 litres of a 10% weight by weight, that's what WW means, slurry of chalk uh, of a density, solids density, 2670 kilograms per meter cubed. So that's relevant to answering this question. Uh, line two isn't. You know, the, the viscosity and uh, the fact that we're operating under constant pressure, we don't need to that to answer this question. Uh, nor do we need to know anything about the filter nor the specific surface area per unit volume of the particles. However, no, nope, we don't need we don't even need to know the porosity either. Basically, all that we need to use is just here in the the top uh, top line. So why is this difficult? Well, it's because we're looking for a volume just here. And what we've been given is a weight by weight concentration or mass by mass, if you prefer concentration. So the first thing we need to do is to convert this into a volume concentration so that we can use the knowledge of it being five litres. The um, We can work out the volume of solids. So what do we mean by solid concentration? OK, so solid concentration. I'll abbreviate that to solid conch. Well, solid concentration is one of these equations which you can get by simply saying to yourself, what does solid concentration mean? It's, it's the volume of solids, volume of solids, and I'll call that, whoa, and I'll call that Vs it looks like I've got a problem again. I'll call that Vs, okay, volume of solids, plus the volume of liquids. Volume liquids. Sorry about the splodgy lines. Okay, so how do we work out the volume of solids and the volume of liquids? Well, we're going to need the density. That's uh, quite important. And density is mass over volume. And we can get that from the units, mass over volume. We can get that from the units, kilograms per meter cubed. Um, so to get the volume, clearly we want mass divided by density. Just rearranging that a little bit. I think I'll come down to a slightly less spiky pen or slightly more spiky pen, slightly less splodgy pen. Right, let's see if that helps at all. Um, okay, so the volume of solids. 
we want the solids concentration, the volume of solids, and we know that it's the mass divided by the density. But we don't know the mass of solids present here, so let's work with the concentration of solids, which we do know because it's 10%, okay, uh, divided by, so that's concentration by weight, um, and I'm just going to call big capital C solid concentration by volume. I'm not going to bother with the V subscript, I'm just going to call it C. Um, so that's concentration by weight of solids divided by the density of solids. Okay, so that's the volume of solids. And then you need to divide that by the volume of everything. So we need the solids again. And we need the liquid, which is going to be 1 minus Cw divided by the density of the liquid. Um, I'll, I'll put that down here rather than how I had it here. So just to recap then, this is the volume of solids. This is the volume of solids plus that's the volume of liquid present in the system. So if we scroll it a little bit just to open up a bit more space. Um, well, of course, what we've got here isn't truly, strictly speaking, the volume of solids um, because uh, that's the weight um, concentration by weight. That's the density kilograms per meter cubed, density kilograms per meter cubed. So uh, clearly we're not going to have something that is really um, the, uh, the weight. But if we were to multiply, if we want to make sense out of this, if we were to multiply by M, then the to where M is the total mass of material, total mass of material times by Cw will give us the actual mass present. So M is the total mass of our solid and liquid. And that's true for all of these. Now we're into genuine units that make sense because uh, rho s is kilograms per meter cubed, but we're multiplying by the kilograms, uh, that becomes meters cubed. That would be genuinely meters cubed of solids. Um, clearly we don't need to bother about that because it cancels out. So let's do a bit of tidying up of this equation. If we divide through by the concentration by weight divided by the density, it turns these two into one. And then we have one minus CW here over CW. CW. And just here, we'll have rho s divided by rho, because we can turn what we're dividing, when we're dividing by a fraction, we can turn it upside down and multiply. Okay, which is effectively what I've done here. Good, so we're ready now to put some, some numbers in. So this is our equation, our conversion between a concentration by weight and a concentration by volume, which I'm not going to bother putting a subscript um, V down. Why? Because normally we're using volume. So rather than have subscripts all over the place, let's just call that big, big capital C. Right. So um, let's put some numbers in. We have one over one plus the concentration by weight was 10%. Okay, uh, so that's 0.1, in which case this becomes 0.9, 0.9, we were told it's 10% solids. Concentration by weight was therefore 0.1. The solids density was 2670, 2670, so we need that just here. Uh, quite honestly, um, we're obviously going to divide by the density of water, which is a thousand. So I can actually just make that 2.67 straight away. 
okay because I've done that division by a thousand straight away right so we've now got something that isn't actually too bad to, to solve um, we're at a stage where we can tidy this up a little bit in that we now have 1 over 1 plus 9 times 2.67 which is equal to time for the calculator uh, 9 times 2.67 is 24 plus 1 equals 2503 so it's 1 over 25 okay so that's 1 over 25 1 over 25 equal to 0 0.04 425 equals 100 so we're not 0 0.04 uh, okay that's the volume concentration so in other words it's four percent by volume so the volume concentration of solids um, let's put this down here so c w equals 10 percent equals 0 0.10 as a volume as a weight by weight fraction oops there's a weight by weight fraction we've got a problem again whereas the volume concentration is four percent which is 0 0.04 volume per volume okay so four percent so if we go back using our knowledge now that this chalk material is four percent by volume so we can pop this in at the top here four percent volume to volume uh, we have five liters five liters is five thousand milliliters or centimeters cubed so it's obviously 5,000 times by 0 0.04, which 4, 5 to 20 is going to be 200 mils, 200 centimetres cubed. So the answer to the first part is C. We have 200 centimetres cubed of solids that we're filtering. And that's the starting point for this this problem okay so on to part two okay so in question or part one rather we established that um, we had 200 centimeters cubed of pure solids in five liters worth of water so uh, let's just draw a little sketch um, this is by no means uh, really a representation a good representation of this particular question because in the first part we were also told it's a filter leaf which is very different from something as simple as a Buckner funnel but I'd like to just talk about it as if it was a Buckner funnel um, because that is something that everybody's familiar with. So a Buckner funnel effectively is this sort of device with perforations here, ceramic, and uh, you just pull a vacuum one way or another from a water pump or a vacuum pump, uh, and in, in pops your slurry. So if we're interpreting this for our particular system, it's 5,000 centimeters cubed or 5,000 milliliters that um, is, is put in. At the end of the filtration then we have a cake, okay? A cake of solids. Now that cake of solids is not bone dry, all right? So we know we had 
200 centimetres cubed of solids, of pure solids, in the slurry, in the five litres worth of slurry. There, I suppose assumption number one is that we're going to assume that they are fully retained by the filter. There's no solids in the filtrate. The filtrate is just going to be clear, clear water, clear liquid. Okay, so we've got 200 centimetres cubed worth of solids in the filter cake. We also have water trapped in that filter cake. It's not bone dry. If it was bone dry, we'd have 4,800 mils going through the filter into the filtrate and no water retained in the filter cake. But that's not the case. We know, or the, the key parameter that we were told about was the voidage, the porosity. And we were told that that was 50%. Assume 50% voidage or porosity. Okay. So in other words, we know that it's half, because that's what 50% is, half solids. So the question is, what's the other half? If that was air, it would be bone dry. So we're going to have to make the assumption that the other half is full of water. 50% voidage, 50% uh, porosity. So it's half solids, half water. So the volume of water retained in the filter cake is also 200. Okay, so that's 200 centimetres cubed of solids, 200 centimetres cubed of liquid inside that, that filter cake. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means the filtrate volume isn't 4,800. It's going to be 4,600 because 200 mils of solids is in the cake, 200 mils of liquid is in the cake. So therefore, the filtrate that is going to be filtered is, in fact, 4,600 mils. These are all parameters that we need to establish before we can do our filtration equation. OK, <clears throat> we can take parts four and five together as well. So the mass of solids in the cake. The important word here is this dry mass of solids, you know, because we know we've got 200 mils of solids, 200 mils of liquid, of water in the filter cake. But we want to know the dry solids. Well, we know it's 200 centimetres cubed. 200 centimetres cubed is the volume of solids. What's that in kilograms? Well, we also know the density is 2670 kilograms per metre cubed, or in CGS units, then that will be 2.67 grams per centimetre cubed. Okay, 2670 kilograms per metre cubed. Uh, if you work that out, that'll work out to 2.67 grams per centimetre cubed. Density is equal to mass over volume. <coughs> we want the mass, so therefore mass is equal to uh, the density times by the volume. So the mass is going to be equal to 2.67, 2.67 times by 200 equals 2.67 times by, try again, 2.67 times by 200 is 534 grams. 534 grams, um, which is, okay, I'm, I'm slightly out with the um, third decimal place, uh, 533 grams or 0 0.533 kilograms. Okay. 
Now the dry mass of solid per unit volume of filtrate. The, this is referred to as little c. Okay, uh, not the big c that I used for volume concentration a few moments ago. This is the little, the little c. There's an equation for it in the box, but we don't need to use that equation here because we just worked out that the dry mass of solids is so that's little c. The dry mass of solids is naught. 0.533 kilograms and prior to that we worked out that the filtrate volume was 4600 centimeters cubed okay so we need to convert that centimeters cubed to meters cubed well that would be times 10 to the minus 6 down here to convert that from centimeters cubed to meters cubed so I'll be multiplying by 10 to the plus 6 up here so in other words what we've got is a value of 0.533 divided by 4600 we know that is in fact um, as as written here, we have one point one six times ten to the minus one two three four, and then that's ten to the minus four times by ten to the plus six. That's ten to the two, ten to the two kilograms because it's dry mass of cake per unit volume of filtrate in SI units, 116. So that's 116 kilograms per meter cubed. And that is one of the parameters we need for our filtration equation. So there's a lot of calculation gone into that, to, into that value, but it's, uh, it's an, a key part of what we're about to use in the filtration equation. OK, we now need to work out the permeability and from the permeability of the specific resistance. So um, the permeability we'll get from using the cassini kalman equation. Uh, just to remind you, in Darcy's law, we have permeability or inverse permeability on the right hand side of Darcy's law. and in cassini kalman the right hand side of the cassini kalman equation looks something like this 1 minus the voidage all squared specific surface area per unit volume squared and that's all divided by the voidage cubed okay so 1 over the permeability is what you see in the um, the brackets just here OK, so the voidage is 50% or 0.5. The specific surface, we're going to have to go back to the original question. OK, because the data was provided right back there. And that is what the specific surface of this material is. 3 times 10 to the 6 metres to the minus 1. OK, so 3 times 10 to the 6 metres to the minus 1 is what we need. Let's pop that just there. So um, let's let's just put the numbers in and rearrange it when we get to the appropriate time. So we have five. That's times by 0 0.5 squared times by three times ten to the six all squared so i better put a bracket around there to remind me to square everything um, and then we have 0 0.5 cubed down here 0.5 cubed so of course we can cancel that out and we can make that into 10 so we have 1 over the permeability is equal to 3 3 is a 9 times 
10 to the 12 and then that becomes 13 because of the 10 that we have just here as well. So we've added that to our 10 uh, to the power 6 doubled. So that is the inverse permeability. So in other words, the permeability is equal to 1 over 9 times 10 to the 13. Or if you prefer, that's 10 over 9 times 10 to the 14. So we we're obviously talking about 1.1 times 10 to the minus 14 in the units of meter squared, which is what permeability has as its unit, meter squared. There we go. So the answer is, is A. OK. Now for, question, now for part five. Well, I call this part five. We're way off part five. It's actually part seven. The specific resistance, alpha in the equation. Um, there's a fairly simple equation that relates specific resistance to permeability. So the name resistance kind of gives it away. Permeability is how easy it is for things to move through something, whereas resistance is how difficult it is for things to move through something. Um, so there's an inverse relation between permeability and resistance. Plus we need to take into account the solid concentration, which is... 1 minus the voidage and we also need the solids density so that is a simple equation it's in the box um, in the uh, in the problem by the side of the problem so we need simply to invert our answer from the previous question which was 1.1 times 10 to the minus 14 uh, we need to multiply it also by 0.5 which is the solid concentration, or 1 minus the voidage, and we need to multiply it by the density, which is 2670 kilograms per meter cubed. OK, so if we take the 10 to the 14 to the top, 10 to the 14, and then just simply do 1 divided by everything else that's on the bottom, so I can do that on this calculator. 1 divided by 1.1 divided by uh, 0.5. Go on then, we'll be lazy. Divided by 2670. Gives us a value of 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so that gives us a value of 6.8, 6.7-ish, 6.7-ish, 6.8 according to my calculator, times 10 to the minus 4. But I think I've lost a few uh, significant figures in using a very basic calculator. Uh, in separate numbers because clearly my 6.8 should be 6.7 and then that becomes times 10 to the 10 which is answer D so we now know the specific resistance so there are two key parameters in our filtration equation the dry cake mass per unit of volume of filtrate which we worked out to be 116 and then the specific resistance, which is the, has the units of metres per kilogram, a length per unit mass, specific resistance of the cake to filtration of 6.7 times 10 to the 10.